Hello students, welcome to the sixth session of your chapter number seven that is structural organization in case of animals. So far in last five sessions, we did discuss about different types of tissues. We have come across the morphology, anatomy of different organisms like earthworm, their morphology, their different organ systems and frog, we have completed the morphology and in anatomy we have studied about the digestive system, the circulatory system as well as the respiration which is present in frog. In today's session we will be starting with the excretory system. In case of frog, the excretory system includes kidney, that will be, you can write kidneys because they are in pairs, ureters, urinary bladder, and cloaca. So these are the components or these are the organs which are involved in the excretory system of a frog. So kidney, these are red color, bean shaped. If you see the vertebral column like this, they are present in the ends of the vertebral column. So these are present in the either sides or in the ends of either sides of the vertebral column. They will be in pairs they will be bean shaped, they will be having red color. So that is how the kidney is having its position. So from each kidney, if this is the kidney, there is a two tube like structures coming out, this, that is nothing but ureters. These ureters in case of male, so if you see a male frog, the same ureter is considered to be a urinogenital duct. Why? Because it carries the urine as well as the sperm. Both of this open up into a common opening that will be the cloaca. So in case of male frogs, pair of kidney have the tube-like structure, these tube-like structure is called ureters. This is commonly called urinogenital duct because it is a common tube which carries the sperm as well as the urine. These get collected in the bladder for storage purpose and once they are released or excreted out that will be from a common opening which is called cloaca. So that is present in case of male frog only. Whereas in female frog, this ureter carries only urine. That is in case of female frog, the ureter carry only the urine. There is a separate duct called OV duct in case of female to carry the eggs. Male only matra ureter so they act as a common tube for both urine as well as transfer of sperms. Ade female frog aladre ureters irvantadu to carry only urine. Eggs anna carry madadike OV duct anvantaha bare tube like structures near the kidney place agarate. So in female it is independent structure whereas male they undergo two function that is why they are commonly called urinogenital duct. Now when it comes to the excretory system here, blood is the one which carries the waste substances into the kidney. Once the blood carries all the waste substances which is not absorbed or which is not necessary for the body of the frog, in the kidney the blood separates from the waste substance and blood is returned back into the frog body and the waste substance is retained in the kidney for purification. So this purification is carried out by the kidney. So in kidney only there are structural and functional unit. Those structural and functional units are called uriniferous tubules or they are also called nephrons. 
these are the structural and functional units of kidney. So, kidney illi excretion aguvanthadu athava excretion components baruvanthadu from the blood. So, blood carries the waste substances into the kidney. The blood is written back into the body whereas the waste substances retain in the kidney. In the kidney, they have particular structural and functional units. Those are called uriniferous tubules or nephrons. These uriniferous tubules or nephrons are the one which helps in separating the waste from the blood. Then the process as I have told it is getting transferred into the ureters then gets stored in the urinary bladder and finally gets released from the cloaca. When it comes to what is the excretory component released by frog that will be urea. Urea is the excretory waste released by the frog. Frog excrete maduvanthadu urea vanna. Adharinda those organisms which release urea as their excretory product those are called ureotelic. There might be a one mark question what is a ureotelic organism? Ureotelic organisms means organisms those excrete urea as their nitrogenous waste. Those are called ureotelic organisms. What is their excretory product? Urea will be their excretory product. What is the example? Frog is one of the example for ureotelic organisms. Once again to discuss about the excretory system in case of frog. Excretory system in case of frog includes four different components. Pair of kidney, ureters, urinary, bladder and cloaca. When it comes to kidney, it is red color, bean shaped which is present at the base of the vertebral column on either sides. That means they occupy the abdominal region. When it comes to the rest part, the kidney produces two tube like structures called ureters which is connected with the urinary bladder and cloaca. In case of male frog, this ureters carry both the sperm as well as the excretory waste. That is why these are commonly called urinogenital duct as they carry both the sperms as well as the excretory waste. Whereas in female, the ureters does the function of only carrying the excretory waste where the eggs are carried out in a separate tube like structure called OV duct which is present near the kidney but they are independent structure. Both male and female release the X as well as the urine through a common opening that is called cloaca. So from the cloaca the sperms are released as well as the excretory waste is released in case of male same in case of female but they are connected separately in case of female. When it comes to separation of waste in the body that is done by pair of kidney. The blood is involved in this blood brings the waste substances into the kidney where they are separated and then excreted out through the cloaca. In the kidney who does this function of separation in the kidney? There are structural and functional units those are called uriniferous tubules or nephrons. These are the structural and functional units of kidney which separates the waste substances from the blood and the blood is circulated back to the body where the waste is still further separated and then the, from the cloaca they are released outside the body. So that is about the excretory system in case of frog. Next we will have to study about the coordination which takes place both chemical as well as neural. When it comes to control and coordination, it includes two components that will be neural as well as chemical coordination is done by endocrine glands. In neural coordination, it includes different components. So there are different parts or different types which come under nervous system. So here it will be the central nervous system the peripheral nervous system 
and the autonomic nervous system. So it is central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, autonomic nervous system. Central nervous system includes two components that will be the brain and the spinal cord. Whereas the peripheral nervous system, it includes the cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Whereas when it comes to autonomic nervous system, it includes two different types that is sympathetic and parasympathetic. So there, these are the different types of neural coordination. So neural coordination includes the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, autonomic nervous system. The central nervous system includes brain and the spinal cord. Peripheral nervous system includes cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. Autonomic nervous system includes the sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. When it comes to this cranial nerves, there are almost 10 cranial nerves which arise from the brain. Now we will study about brain also but before that let me give a detailed structure about endocrine organs. In our last sessions regarding the tissues, we had studied about this endocrine glands. So endocrine glands means these are ductless glands. They release their chemical secretions directly into the blood and through blood they reach the target organs. So, in endocrine organs or glands only, the component or the chemical which is released will be called hormones. So, there are different hormones which are released by this endocrine gland which help in chemical coordination. When it comes to example for endocrine glands that will be pituitary. thyroid, parathyroid, thymus, pineal, pancreatic islets, adrenal, and gonads. These are the different types of endocrine glands which release hormones for chemical coordination. Once again to discuss about the control and coordination. The control and coordination in the body of the frog is carried by either the nervous system or else the chemical coordination is controlled by the endocrine glands. When it comes to the nervous system or the neural coordination, it includes central nervous system, peripheral nervous system and autonomic nervous system where the central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system includes the cranial nerves and spinal nerves where 10 cranial nerves are arise from the brain region. When it comes to the autonomic nervous system, it will be the sympathetic or parasympathetic types of nervous system. In together, these nervous system control and coordinate the body function in case of frog. Apart from this neural control, there is one more that will be endocrine glands. Endocrine glands are ductless glands which release the chemicals into the blood. The chemical released here will be hormones. Some of the important endocrine glands which are present in frog will be pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid, pineal, thymus, pancreatic islets, gonads as well as adrenal. All in together are the different types of endocrine glands which release the hormones for chemical coordination. Next we will study about the brain as well as parts of brain. What are the components? which are controlled by brain. So brain, it is present within the brain cage. That brain cage is called cranium. Or you can also 
call it brain cage or brain box that is called cranium when it comes to the brain it is divided into different forms that will be the forebrain midbrain and the hindbrain forebrain it includes olfactory lobe paired cerebral hemisphere and unpaired diencephalon these are the components which are present in the forebrain that is the olfactory lobe paired cerebral hemisphere unpaired diencephalon when it comes to midbrain it controls or it has the optic lobes and the hindbrain it includes cerebellum and medulla oblongata once again to discuss the brain is divided into three different parts the forebrain midbrain and the hindbrain forebrain includes the optic lobes paired cerebral hemisphere and unpaired diencephalon midbrain includes the optic lobes hindbrain includes the cerebellum and medulla oblongata when it comes to this medulla oblongata this medulla oblongata passes through foramen magnum which forms spinal cord and this spinal cord is present within the vertebral column the medulla oblongata passes through the foramen magnum and forms the spinal cord which is present within the vertebral column so that is about the brain of the frog so brain of the frog is present or protected within the brain cage or the brain box called cranium the brain is divided into forebrain midbrain and hindbrain forebrain includes the olfactory lobes paired cerebral hemisphere unpaired diencephalon when it comes to the midbrain it includes the optic lobe and the hindbrain it includes the cerebellum and medulla oblongata this medulla oblongata passes through the foramen magnum and forms a spinal cord which is present within the vertebral column so that they are protected and are safe within the vertebral column so that's about the brain next we'll have to study about the different types of sensory organs sensory organs include touch which are controlled by sensory papillae taste by taste buds smell by nasal epithelium these three components are cellular aggregations which are present around the nerve endings these three sense organs like for touch the sensory papillae for taste the taste buds for smell the nasal epithelium all these three are cellular aggregation which is present around the nerve endings apart from this one there are two more one is for vision that will be eyes and one more for hearing that will be the tympanum which also has the inner ear so in this vision they have eyes this eyes are present in the orbit of the skull the skull has deep immersions where the eye should be placed that is called orbits this orbits contain pair of eyes hearing it is controlled by tympanum and inner ear just in case of mammals 
we have external ears which represent the hearing region but these do not have any external ear instead they have just opening behind their eyes we have studied this in frog morphology so this tympanum helps in tracking down the sounds with the help of the inner ear both these eye as well as ear are the structural well organized system which are present in the body of the frog which helps in playing a major role as a sense organ once again to discuss sense organs include the touch which is controlled by sensory papillae taste which is controlled by the taste buds smell which is controlled by the nasal epithelium all these three structures are cellular aggregations which are present around the nerve ending but the well organized well structurally modified sense organs will be the vision for which they have eyes that is pair of eyes which is present in the orbit of the skull and for hearing they have tympanum as well as inner ear so this tympanum as well as inner ear along with the eyes have a well organized structure which helps in vision and hearing apart from the sensory organ tympanum also plays a major role in balancing the body so tympanum not only acts as sense organ but also acts as balancing the body so that is about the different types of sense organs next we'll have to study about the reproductive system in case of frog that will be the sexual dimorphism can be easily seen that means what there is a separate male and a female organism and we'll be studying about the reproductive systems of male and female in the screen what you can see is the male reproductive system of a frog so the male reproductive system of frog consists of a pair of yellow color ovoid that is oval shaped structure which is called testes so a male reproductive system contains of a pair of ovoid shaped yellow color testes this is found adhering that adhering means attached to the upper part of the kidney by a double fold of peritoneum called mesorchium so these pair of testes are found adhered to the upper part of the kidney with a double fold of peritoneum called mesorchium next the vas efferentia are 10 to 12 in number which arise from the testes and open into the sides of the kidney then these open into bridder's gland so vas efferentia are 10 to 12 in number which arise from the testes which opens up into the sides of the kidney and then opens into the bridder's gland this communicates with the urinogenital duct that comes out of the kidney and opens into the cloaca so this bridder's gland communicate with the urinogenital duct that comes out of the kidney and opens up into the cloaca so cloaca is a small median chamber which helps in passing the fecal matter the urine as well as the sperms so that is about the male reproductive system in case of frog once again to discuss it contains a pair of ovoid yellow color testes which are attached to the upper part of the kidney with a double fold of peritoneum called mesorchium the vas efferentia is 10 to 12 in number which arise from the testes opens into the sides of the kidney this further opens into the bridder's gland which communicate with the urinogenital duct that comes out of the kidney and opens into the cloaca cloaca is a median chamber with a small opening which is used in removing the fecal matter urine as well as the 
sperms. Next, moving on into the female reproductive system. This screen represents the female reproductive system. Female reproductive system has a pair of ovaries. The ovaries are situated near the kidney and are independent. Whereas in case of male, what you have seen is the pair of testes are attached or adhered to the kidney. But here the ovaries are situated near the kidney and are independent structures. OV duct arises from the ovary and opens into the cloaca separately. That is what we have discussed even in the excretory system. Where in case of male they have urinogenital duct which is the common passage for both sperms as well as the urine. Whereas in case of female reproductive system they have ureters for passing the urine and OV duct for passing of eggs. But both open into a common opening called cloaca. A mature female can lay about 2500 to 3000 ovas. They have this ability that means they lay the unfertilized egg in the film of water that is the external fertilization takes place. Male sperms and the nirig release madate, hage female eggs and the nirig release madate. So, that is the property of their amphibian nature. That means they require water for reproduction. So, there is external fertilization which takes place in the water. In the case of development, they have indirect development involving the larval stage. This larval stage is called the tadpole stage which undergoes metamorphosis to develop into a adult. So that is about the female reproductive system. Once again to discuss, it includes pair of ovaries. The ovaries are situated near the kidney and are independent in nature. Oviduct arises from the ovary and opens into the cloaca separately. A mature female lays about 2500 to 3000 ovas which are laid externally that means the fertilization is externally taking place in the water. The development is indirect here involving a larval stage called tadpole. This tadpole stage undergoes metamorphosis to produce a adult. That is about the female reproductive system. Next coming to the last part of this particular chapter that is application or uses of frog. When it comes to frog it is very much useful for human beings because they have the ability or these are carnivores as I have told in the elementary canal. These are carnivores consume insects. So they protect human that is agricultural crops from the hazardous insects by consuming them. That is one of the benefits of having frogs. Second benefit is they play a very major role in maintaining the ecological balance especially in the food chain as well as the food web. That is the second benefit. Third benefit is this is restricted in only few countries because not all the countries use this frog. Especially frog legs that is muscular frog legs are consumed as food by man. This is not present in India but out of India some of the northern countries contain these frog legs in their menu. So these are the different benefits of frog that means they help in maintaining the ecological balance both in the food web as well as the food chain. They help in protecting the agricultural crops from hazardous insects by consuming them as well as few of the countries use the muscular leg of the frog as food. So that's all in this chapter. So we have in together studied in this chapter regarding the tissues like epithelial, connective, muscular as well as neural. Apart from this one we have studied about the morphology of earthworm and frog whereas in earthworm in anatomy we had covered about the digestive system, circulatory system, respiratory system, excretory system, sensory as well as the reproductive system. Whereas in case of anatomy of frog, we did include elementary canal, respiratory system, circulatory system, excretory system, control and coordination, sense organs as well as the male and female reproductive system. Thank you.